Welcome back, AP Calculus. We are now moving on to chapter three, and we're looking at section 3.1, which deals about derivatives. And we're also gonna take a look at the tangent line dilemma. So this word derivative, that word means the rate of change. It means slope. So just to take you back to algebra one, slope is rise over run. That's what slope is, rise over run. So another word, for slope, the calculus word that you're going to hear a lot is called derivative. And just to review a couple concepts with you guys, uh, when you have a line that's increasing, when your function is increasing, we say that the, the slope is positive. So this red line, we're going to say has a positive slope. So the function is increasing, we have a positive slope. When the function decreases, so this guy right here has a negative slope. When your line is horizontal, your function is neither increasing nor decreasing. So we say you have a zero slope or the slope is constant. So this guy, this line is a zero slope. Or you might hear the word constant slope. In this case, the zero slope, we'll say the slope is zero. And for a line that's vertical, we say that the slope is undefined. So those are the different situations of slopes. Now we're gonna move into the calculus part of it. How do you write this and what's the connection to the tangent line problem? So from algebra one, we looked at slopes. In geometry, if you have a curve, right, you have a circle, and if you have a line that intersects that point, if you have a line, so let me draw a line for you. This line, this black line is gonna inter intersect that point, that red point. And so we call this the tangent line. The tangent line, what that means is we have this black line that intersects a curve at exactly one point. Tangent line intersects curve at one point. So we have that tangent line. That's the, the word. However, if you have a line that intersects two points, so here we have another circle, another curve, and you're gonna intersect those two red dots. We call that the secant line. So the secant line intersects the curve twice. Secant line, I'm gonna write that over here, intersects the curve at two points. So now I'm gonna talk about the secant line and then we're gonna make our transition to how this connects to calculus and the tangent line problem. So in the, if we're trying to find the slope of a secant line, basically we have two uh, coordinates on a graph. So let's see where we're gonna take you. We're gonna take you uh, here. Let's take you here to this graph. So in algebra, in algebra one, we had a dot here, a coordinate, and you might have had another coordinate, and our lines weren't curved. So let's see if I could. Wonder if I could erase this. Let's just delete that. Let's try it one more time. Uh, trying to erase that green curve. Let's try one more time. Will you delete, cut? There you go. So in algebra one, we dealt with having these these two points, right? And if you draw a line through those two points, you would get this. You would get the straight line. That's supposed to be a straight line, you guys. And in that straight line, my line is not the best straight line, but you get the point, right? It's supposed to be a straight line. 
and in that straight line you could find the slope we we call the slope the rise over the run so we can go so many units up let's say and so many units to the right to get to that dot and this is called your rise and your run we know that from algebra one the slope is rise over run in other words delta y the change in y going up or down over the change in x and this is the run the change in x and this is the rise the change in y so that's algebra one uh, now in calculus we start to look at some different notation so instead of this particular let me let me mark this as purple instead of this particular x value well for now let's call that x and for now let's call this x1 let's call this x2 and let's call this corresponding y value to x1 y1 and its corresponding y value for x2 let's call that y2 so in algebra 1 we were calling the slope y2 minus y1 does that formula ring a bell you guys over x2 minus x1 and that's this formula that I have here the slope of the secant line now let me take you to our calculus notation now so here we have a couple more graphs so in algebra 1 we dealt with these straight lines trying to find the slope um, of that trying to find the rate of change of that straight line in calculus we start to look at well what if it's a curve how can you find the slope of a curve so we're gonna try to use the same idea but instead of x1 and x2 we're going to use a little different notation so here we go so let's put our two dots just like how we had before let's call this first coordinate x and in order to find the y value of that function so let's let's say we have our function y equals f of x that's your function so if you plug in x into that f function you would get your y value which is f of x okay so x goes inside the function and you get your y value which is f of x now let's put another dot here now let's call that let's call that um, x value x plus h so here we have x and here we have x plus h so what we're saying is this little gap this little gap right here and I'm just gonna color it in just so you can see that that's that little piece right there that piece is h so what I did is is I added this blue part which is x that distance from the origin is x plus the red part I'm combining the x the blue the x and the red and that gives me x plus h so the combined distances from the origin is this x part and this h part together that's x plus h x plus h so now if I wanted to find the y value of that particular dot I would take x plus h and plug it into my function and that's how I get that notation f of x plus h now I want to find the slope of the secant line so if I want to find the slope of those two dots right if I want to find the slope then I would take the right dot which is f of x plus h as you can see I'm gonna highlight this for you I would take the right the right coordinate as y2 subtract y1 f of x and that's why I'm subtracting y1 f of x over x sub 2 this is x sub 2 x plus h that's why I put an x plus h there minus x subtracting that x and then and that's it that's the slope of the secant line just being a little bit more fancy with my notation um, I'm going to subtract the x values in the denominator right because 
I could combine those terms, the x and the minus x, and that's gonna just give me h as my result. So on the denominator, I have h as my result. The top is gonna stay the same. f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, and that's called the difference quotient. That's called the difference quotient. We have a division bar, that's a quotient, and we're subtracting um, the top part, the numerator, the y values, and on the bottom, we subtracted the x values, but what you really ended up getting is this little, this little piece, the h part in the graph, that's that little uh, distance from the original, this, or not the original, but like from this x value to the other x value. And in some uh, books, we call it delta x. All right. So the so let's let's draw our let's draw our our secant line. I'm gonna draw this in red. So I'm gonna connect those two dots. And for some reason, it changes back to blue. But I'm connecting those those two dots, and that's the red line. That's the slope of the secant line. Now the question that we're asking in calculus is if I have that red dot still, right? That red dot, and that's called x. Is there something that I could do to x plus h, the second dot, the, the second coordinate, so I could so I could find the slope, so I could find the slope at x. So I want to do something to let me grab a this highlighter, this blue highlighter. I want to do something to this dot so that I could find the slope of it, of x. So what could I do to the right side of this dot? What could I do to that red dot that you see there uh, to get the slope at x? Well, I could take that right, the right dot, the red dot that you see there that's marked with the blue arrow. I could move it closer. I could move it closer to the, to the x dot. My colors are, are out of whack right now because of the I don't know like I color it in but then the, the this uh, app is changing the colors but all right so here's here's um X and this now I'm just gonna stick to this red color this is X plus H so what I did is I'm moving X plus H a little bit closer to to X now I can connect those two red dots and that's gonna give me a better approximation for the slope at X so what if I wanted to find this slope right there? Find the slope at x. Now to find the slope at x, you need two coordinates, right? You need two dots to find the, the slope at the slope. So if I wanted to find the slope at one dot, how could I do that? Well, how about I take my the x plus h dot and I move it closer. So here is um here is x again sorry let me get back my red so we're, we're being consistent so here's x right and what if I move x plus h just a little bit closer so maybe like right there so I could connect those two red dots and that's that's a better that's a secant line still because I am have two dots, that's a secant line. But as you see, I'm getting closer to x and I'm getting a better approximation of what the slope could be at x. So I'm trying to ask myself, question mark, what is the slope at x? What is the slope at x? And by asking that question, you know, in calculus, we're not asking I mean the language is different instead of saying slope we're saying what's the derivative what's the derivative that's just another word for slope we're just changing our word we're being fancy what's the derivative at x well to do that you have to take that secant line that those two dots and you have to make it into a tangent line so we're trying to get as close as possible to x as close as we can so that eventually those two dots kind of become one so I'm just gonna kind of like put, put, let's say that was the other dot that black dot they become one and if you connect those two dots you kind of just they kind of merge together those two dots 
but that would be a better slope at x and what we're trying to do is that gap do you see where h is let me let me highlight this in uh, in blue this h right here it was a big gap then what i'm trying to do to h is i'm trying to close that gap that was this this uh, red part that was h remember from the beginning this this gap was h now as i get the second dot and i move it closer to x as i move x plus h closer to x what do you notice is happening to what do you notice is happening to h is it getting bigger or smaller it's getting smaller right h is getting smaller so this distance this little distance right here is getting very smaller and that's this idea of limit we're going to we're going to take the limit of this problem and we're going to let h become so small that it approaches zero and that's the idea of of the tangent line problem can you find the tangent at one particular dot is it possible to find the tangent at one particular dot and the idea is yes if we do a limit that's this idea here the idea is is make this a limit problem so we're gonna make this a limit problem all right so let's keep going so the definition of a derivative and there it is we made we're gonna take the slope of the secant so we're gonna take the slope this is the slope part right here but the moment you make h approach zero you make h super super small then we are make we're doing a limit here so we're changing this to a limit problem now so no more algebra one we're not finding slopes now we are trying to find the limit we're trying to get that right dot closer to the other dot so that we can find the derivative at one particular moment in time and that's called the derivative at the definition of derivative that's what this formula is that you see and another way of denoting that definition of derivative is this notation right here f prime of x that notation that is another way of saying derivative you could also say the limit as h approaches zero that's just another way of f of x plus h minus f of x over h that is also the same uh, same meaning definition of derivative this is called the book calls this the limit process the limit process all right so let's let's practice what this means here's our example find the derivative of your function 3x minus x squared by the limit process by the definition of a derivative so we have this function and we want to find what the derivative is so take a moment to write that down All right, so to find the derivative of that function, we're gonna use the definition of derivative. It's kind of long, so be prepared to write, but in the next couple lessons, we will come up with a shortcut. But for now, let's do it. Let's appreciate how math came about, how calculus came about. So f prime of x, that little, um, let's see if I can get a mark a different color. This little apostrophe, that we call that prime um, some professors call it dash f dash x but that denotes derivative okay derivative so the f prime means derivative so you have f prime of x equals so we're gonna be applying that formula right f of x plus h minus f of x we already know what f of x is this is f of x now the question is what is f of x plus h well, wherever you see a x, just plug in x plus h. So we have a 3. Next to the 3, we have an x. That's going to become x plus h minus x squared. Well, there's another x. That x becomes x plus h. And that's, that is a, what x plus h is. That is what f of x plus h is. So 
going back to our limit of how we're going to write this, the limit as h approaches 0, we have f of x plus h, we're going to write that as 3, parentheses x plus h, minus x plus h squared, minus, okay, so that's f of x plus h. This guy right here is f of x plus h minus f of x. Now I gotta subtract what f of x is. Uh, f of x is that blue function. So let me just write it in blue. Minus 3x minus x squared. That's f of x. That was given to us in the problem. All over. What do we write on the bottom? According to the definition of derivative, we put an h on the bottom. So that's our definition of derivative. But we have to simplify. We're trying to figure out what happens. We're trying to figure out what do we get in our answer. So let's clean this up. All right, so let's multiply. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times h is 3h. Minus, I have x plus h to the power of 2. So that means I have two of these guys. x plus h squared. Well. That means I have two of them, so I could say x plus h, x plus h, right? I guess I could write something like that. Now, this stuff right here, we have to be able to do that quickly. So what I'm going to do is do that quickly. Um, in calculus, we have to get really quick with our algebra skills. So I'm going to rewrite that. In my mind, I know it's x plus h times x plus h. So I hope you can visualize with me what's happening. I am multiplying, or if you want to do it on the side, that's fine. So you're going to get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. When you multiply those two terms, that's what you get. Remember there's a minus sign there, so put, put the parentheses. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. So that's what you get when you multiply x plus h with x plus h minus 3x plus x squared. So I ended up just distributing that minus sign to 3x and I distributed that minus sign to negative x squared. All over h. Alright, so now we continue the limit as h approaches 0. 3x plus 3h minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared minus 3x plus x squared all over h let's clean this up can we combine can we cancel any terms so we can cancel the 3x hold up a second i was trying to get red here we could cancel this 3x with the minus 3x anything else we could cancel the x squares And that looks like that's it. Now, let's clean it up. Now, some of this stuff you can do in your brain. You can already see that I, I could cancel more things. And by all means, cancel away. I'm just rewriting it to, to show you all the steps. So at this point, we're saying, okay, what else could we cancel? So I call this a triple butterfly, a three wing butterfly. Here is our butterfly. You're going to divide that term by h, the middle term by h, and the last term by h. Three wing butterfly. Um, what that means is h gets cancelled in every single term. Or, another way to look at this problem, you could factor out the h on the top, and you have 3 minus 2x minus h. Now that h cancels. That's just another way to look at this, or you could just know that you're going to be canceling this H with this H with this H with one of these H's. So you're left with 3, there's a 3, you're left with negative 2x, there's a negative 2x, and you're left with a minus H. So you have the limit as H approaches 0 of 3 minus 2x minus h. At this point you could do plug and chug. When you plug in 0 for h, you just get 3 minus 2x. And that is the limit. That is the result. 
of that problem. So how, how else could we write this? This is another way of writing um, the problem. You're given f of x equals 3x minus x squared, right? So you could say the derivative, f prime, the derivative is 3 minus 2x. So that would be the answer. That's how you could write the answer. So the question is, well, what does that mean? What does that derivative mean? That means that anywhere on your graph, your graph starts off as a quadratic. This guy right here um, starts off as a quadratic because of that x squared, the 3x minus x squared. That's a quadratic. Uh, by you finding the derivative, by you finding this f prime, anywhere on the graph, anywhere on the quadratic, you could find what the slope is. You could find what the slope is by using the f prime function. And so that's what we're saying. Um, in the directions, um, let's, let's look at part B. Find the slope now of your quadratic when x equals 4 using the definition of derivative. So we already, we already found the derivative, right? We found that f prime of x is 3 minus 2x. We did the definition, that was that limiting process. We found the derivative, now just find the slope when x equals 4. Find the derivative when x equals 4. So plug in 4 for x, and you get your answer, 3 minus 8, negative 5. That's f prime of 4, the derivative of your quadratic at x equals 4. All right, let's move on. So now there's other ways of writing the derivative. There's other ways of writing. So I want to show you this other form. This is called the alternate form of the derivative at x equals c. Hmm. When x equals c. So x is approaching c. So what we're saying in this problem is we have our c value is dot. And the, that c value, the, the on the x-axis, that c value has a has a y value. We're going to call that f of c. Now, we could also that shouldn't have been a dot. We could also graph an x value, another coordinate on this green line on the curve. And when you have two dots, you can connect them, and you get your secant line. So there's our secant line and that x value has has a y value called f of x so another way of finding the slope at c that's like the magical place right here finding the slope at c is to take x the x coordinate to take that x value and move it closer and closer and closer and closer let x approach c we're approaching c and that's this formula right here we're saying let x approach c let that x dot the x coordinate on the green graph approach the c value and that's uh, just another way of writing the derivative of finding the derivative at C. So let's practice that. Find the slope. It's the same function, 3x minus x squared. Okay, it's the same function as before. Let's look at before. There it is, right? 3x minus x squared at x equals 4. Same function. But we're just going to use another tool, another way, another method of finding this. Using the alternate form of the definition of derivative. Let's do this. Let's go. Here we go. So in this alternate form, it says start off with f prime of c, f prime of c at c. So f prime, our c value is 4. We want to find the derivative at 4. So take the limit as x approaches c, your, your number. The limit as x approaches 4. 
f of x minus f of c. So we have f of x minus f at 4, c is 4. So maybe this is your c value of x minus 4. So now we've got to solve this. Here we go. Let's solve f prime of 4, the derivative at 4. x approaches 4. f of x, what is f of x? That's this guy right here. That's 3, 3x three minus x squared minus whatever f of 4 is. So we got to figure out what's f of 4. This guy, f of 4, goes right in there. So let's plug in 4 into the x function and you get 3 times 4 minus 4 squared. So that's f of 4, you get negative 4. Let me just check my math real quick. f of 4, 3 times 4 is 12, minus 4 squared which is 16, 12 minus 16 which is negative 4. Alright, so let's continue here. All over, x minus 4. So, if I were to clean this up, I would see that I have two negatives. These guys, they're going to become positive. Okay, so I can make them plus plus. And I would have 3x minus x squared plus 4. And as I continue to clean this up, um, I'm noticing that I could factor the numerator. Um, in order to factor the numerator, let me first start off by, by changing this minus sign, by factoring out a minus sign. So it's a quadratic, but I, I don't want that minus sign on the x. I just, I don't know, don't want, don't want it there. So in order to get rid of that minus sign, I could factor out a minus. So if I factor out a minus, um, that x squared becomes positive, right? I could factor out the, I could factor in the minus, and it becomes negative x squared. But I wanted to factor it out. Uh, the 3x, that's the middle guy. If I make it negative, negative times a negative is positive, and that's positive 3x. Negative times a negative is positive 4, and that's positive 4. So that's, I just ended up changing the look and the reason why I did that is so I can factor having my my leading term positive x squared x times x is x squared uh, now I gotta find out the factors of 4 so maybe 4 times 1 4 times 1 is 4 if I make this negative 4 plus 1 I get negative 3 and that's what I want to hear check that works out the bottom is x minus 4 now I could cancel I can remove this problem and I end up with the limit as x approaches 4 of negative x plus 1 as x approaches 4 at this point I could do plug and chug and I get 4 plus 1 which is 5 but that is a negative 5 and that is my answer the derivative at 4 is negative 5 using the alternate form using the alternate form of definition of derivative negative 5 and you saw that previously too right here same answer using the original definition of derivative so my recommendation you guys is to um, to know that the derivative right f prime of x I'm gonna highlight this again f prime of x that's the derivative notation but it's also a limit problem in that limit problem I want you to just carefully pay attention 
your original function is right there. This is f of x. On the AP test, on the multiple choice, they'll they'll probably give you like a limit, like the way that this looks, the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x, and they want you to find the derivative. And so you could do the whole process of doing the limit, but if you recognize that this is your function, this guy, this f of x is your function, later on in chapter 3, you're going to figure out a shortcut to find the derivative. But as long as you know how to find the original function, the original f of x, you'll be okay. Um, so then, this is a lot of algebra, you know, simplifying or factoring to find out what the derivative is at a particular place. There's another way of doing this, that's called the alternate form. But I think we're going to practice some more. So, um, just to restate that formula, the definition of derivative formula, what we're trying to find is the slope of the tangent line. That's what we're trying to find, the slope of the tangent line. And the definition of derivative, it has a formula. So remember this guy right here. The formula is the limit as h approaches 0. Think back to that picture. We had f of x plus h. That was that dot on the right side. And we ended up with an h and the denominator. So that's the limit formula, the limit process. And the symbol for the derivative of f of x, uh, I'm not going to put equals because f of x doesn't equal, so let me, let me erase this. Uh, the symbol for the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. So when you find the, the derivative, that's the same as the limit, okay? The, the, the limit, when you're taking the limit of, of, those, uh, of the secant line, you're trying to get the the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so let's practice some more. Example, find the derivative of the function x squared using the definition. So we have we have an x squared function. So I'm gonna graph that for you guys just to get that picture, a little break from some algebra here. So when x is zero, you get zero, zero squared. So there's that coordinate. When x is one, f of 1, you get 1 squared, which is 1, so 1, 1. When x is negative 1, you get negative 1 squared, which is also 1. When x is 2, you get 2 squared, which is 4. When x is negative 2, you get negative 2 squared, which is 4. Alright, and we can connect our dots and you get this parabola. So that is our graph. That is your f of x function. What we're trying to find out is what is the derivative of, of x squared? Uh, the derivative is going to give us the slope at any particular place on the graph. So that's what we've got to find, the, the derivative. So let's do this. f prime of x, derivative, right, derivative, is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. We start with that. So wherever you see a x in the original function, you plug in a x plus h. So f of x plus h is x plus h squared. Subtract f of x all over h. So x plus h squared, x plus h squared, that's the same thing as saying x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. That's, that's um, just factoring and multiplying it out. Minus x squared all over h. Could it cancel? Could it cancel? Yes, it can. 
x squared is cancel butterfly method do you see butterfly there's an h here that could cancel and there's an h here that could also cancel so bam that cancels and that too cancels so we have the limit as h approaches 0 2x plus h h approaches 0 so you can do plug and chug and your answer is 2x so that's the answer for f prime of x. So what does that mean? That means you pick a place on the graph and you can find the slope of that line. That's what that means. So let's write that down. f prime of x, the derivative, back up a little bit with that the derivative tells you the slope anywhere on the graph on the graph in our case our graph is f of x this is your your function your, your graph f of x so if you wanted to find the slope at let's say the slope at 2 if you wanted to find the slope at 2 then you would plug in 2 into the derivative so f prime f different color sorry f prime if you wanted to find the slope at 2 then plug in 2 into the derivative 2 times 2 because the slope is 2x so 2 times 2 is 4 what that means is if you draw the tangent line at 2, this, this red line that I'm drawing right now has a slope, has a slope of 4. So I'm going to say has a slope, m equals 4. m stands for slope. But if I wanted to find the slope at x equals 1, f, so I'm going to do that in different color. If I wanted to find, I'll do that in purple, the slope at 1, plug in 1 for x and again I'm using the f prime right I'm using f prime of x that's a slope machine the derivative machine plug in 1 for x and you get 2 what that means is if you draw the tangent line at 1 this this slope right here this this line that passes through that one that green dot has a has a slope and it, notice how it's less steep the purple line is less steep than the red line and that that less steepness the, the the number being less steepness tells you that it's a, it should be a smaller number than the slope should be a smaller number than the red line than the red than, than the red slope so that's the slope of the at x equals 1 the purple line so m equals 2 uh, let's see if I could back up a little bit is m equals 2 is the slope is the slope at x equal 1 hey, right that's where the purple line passes the coordinate when x equals 1 we're gonna keep practicing don't worry just breathe we, we're gonna get this it's just more practice there's a lot of concept happening here so in this next example Find the derivative, find the slope. So find that slope machine. Um, we got our function, x, the radical, the square root of x minus two, okay, that's our function. So if we were to graph this, let's just graph it so we start off with a picture so you see what, how does our picture look like. f of zero is zero minus two. Now in algebra two, uh, we learned that's an imaginary number, so it's not going to work for us. So you can't you can't square root a negative. So we're not going to deal with that. Likewise, when you plug in one, one minus two is negative one. We're not going to deal with that. So x can't be zero. X can't be one. What about when x is two? Two minus two. You get zero. So when x is two, y is zero. 
What about when x is 3? f of 3, we're plugging 3 into our x value. Square root of 1 is 1. So when x is 3, you get 1. And what about when x is 4? So you get 4 minus 2, which is radical 2. When x is 5, when x is 6, I'm going to use x equals 6, you'll see why right now. 6 minus 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. So when x equals 6, 4, 5, 6, when x equals 6, our y value is 2. So if you connect those red dots, your graph actually looks something like that. Okay, so that's our graph of, that's our, our F graph. That's our F graph, radical x minus 2. Now, we want to find the derivative. We call it the slope machine. Anywhere on the graph, how can you find the slope? Well, that's that one formula we're going to use, right? So here we go. f prime of x, to find the derivative, we have to do the limit as h goes to 0. Remember that formula, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So we know that our function is f of x, but if I wanted to find f of x plus h, backtrack a little bit sorry if I wanted to find f of x plus h that means wherever you see an x you plug in x plus h so let's plug in x plus h x plus h minus 2 this x plus h got plugged in for x all right, so now we go back to our formula. Instead of f of x plus h, it'll be radical x plus h minus 2 minus f of x, which is radical x minus 2, all over h. Now, we learned in chapter 2 how to solve radicals with limits. And that was the idea of conjugate, multiplying by the conjugate or rationalizing. So that's what we got to do here. We're going to multiply the top. Keep the, keep the inside the same. The only thing that changes is that, that minus sign in this case becomes plus. So that minus sign becomes plus. X minus two. And we're going to multiply that on the top and on the bottom. Don't forget the zero as h approaches zero. So the only thing we're going to multiply is where we want to eliminate or we want to get rid of those radicals. So that's the only thing we're going to multiply right there. There's a lot of radicals there. We want to get rid of those radicals, so that's what we're going to multiply. Go back, sorry about that. So let's go back and clean this up. So we have f, oops, let's get back to blue, we have f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0. When you multiply those radicals, the first radical, um, we're going to get x plus h minus 2, just multiplying this guy with this guy. And here's a shortcut when you're multiplying with um, with uh, conjugates. You really only multiply the first term and the last term. So I'll probably put a triangle here. Triangle with triangle. Only those guys get multiplied because the other terms, the inner terms, are going to cancel out. If you want to try that, go ahead and multiply this all out. But based on your homework from chapter 2, you, you might have figured out the pattern that things 
in the inside will cancel out. So I'm going to go straight to the shortcut, you guys. So circle multiplies with circle, triangle multiplies with triangle. So that you have a minus still, but you have an x minus 2. Keep that in parentheses because that's where people can make mistakes. The x minus 2 um, is in parentheses. That minus sign is going to get distributed in a moment. So now you distribute that minus sign to the x, minus sign to the 2. So we have limit as h approaches 0, x plus h minus 2 minus x plus 2 all over h. So we have that minus 2 going to cancel with that plus 2. The x going to cancel with the minus x. Lastly, we have h on top and h on the bottom. That becomes a 1. So you have the limit as h approaches 0 of 1. And the result is 1. So I wrote my result as 1, but if you look carefully, I forgot to multiply one thing. Do you see the stuff in red? I was doing this very quickly. This guy right here has to get attached to the H, to this H. I didn't write it, so let's write it. Apologize, you guys. X plus H minus 2. X minus 2. We still have that on the denominator. So we should have a X plus H minus 2. Let's, let's fix this little denominator part right here. The H's are still going to cancel. So we had an H that canceled, right? But we still had that stuff in red. We had a X plus H minus 2 plus radical X minus 2. Parentheses. Sorry about that. So let's fix it. Our limit is not 1. So it's still a limit problem, but now we're going to do, well let's clean it up and then we'll do plug and chug. So h divided by h is 1, but we still had that stuff in red, right? So now, um, we're going to do plug and chug, so when you plug in 0 for h, we're going to get 1 over, plug in 0 for h, you get square root of x minus 2 plus x minus 2 on the bottom. In other words, you have two, you have two of those guys, two of the radicals x minus 2. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our derivative. That is equal to f prime of x. All right, so that is our derivative. So we have um, our last example now. Find the derivative of the function f of x equals 1 over x using the definition. So go ahead and write this down. So we're going to find the derivative of this using that limiting process. We have to know how to write that, right? So h approaches what number? 0. And we have f of x plus h on top minus f of x all over h and that is going to give us the derivative f prime f prime of x so we know what f of x is that's given to us we have to figure out what f of x plus h is so wherever you see a x plug in an x plus h So instead of 1 over x, it'll be 1 over x plus h. I'm changing the x part into x plus h. Minus the f function, which is 1 over x, all over h. Now, I could plug in 0. I could do plug and chuck right now in the beginning. However, if I plug in 0, there is a 0 on the denominator, right? And that's a problem. So we can't have... A zero on the denominator so we have to figure out how we can uh, change this problem how we can be fancy and simplify this and to do that we're gonna combine those fractions this 
denominator here, this little denominator, is missing an x plus h. In order to combine the fractions, this guy is missing an x. So if I clean this up, I have x minus, this is x, minus x plus h in parentheses. Or I could multiply, I could distribute the minus sign, let's go ahead and just distribute right away. Minus times the x, and minus times the h. So minus x, minus h. The denominator is x, parentheses x plus h, all over h. Don't forget the h. Alright, so now we're going to clean this up. x minus x could cancel. And you know how I have an h on the denominator? This guy right here. I could put a 1 underneath that. Multiply by the reciprocal on top and bottom. So that way these h's could cancel. And I end up with limit as h approaches 0. So I have a negative h times 1. That's negative h. And I have these three terms being multiplied. I have a x times an x plus h times an h. Do you see what I could cancel? The h's. This h could cancel this h. And I could have canceled it over here, but I didn't want to confuse you guys like with all the, the writing. So I cleaned it up first and then I canceled. So my new answer now is the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 x parentheses x plus h. Now I can do plug and chug. Plug in 0 for h. When you plug in 0 for h, you have x squared on the denom. And that is our derivative. That is your f prime of x. What you see on the right side is a graph of 1 over x. This is the graph of 1 over x. However, if you wanted to find the slope, if you wanted to find the derivative at a particular x value, so let's say when x is 1, what's the derivative at 1? Use the derivative machine. Plug in 1 for x and see what you get. 1 squared is 1, negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. So what that means is when x is 1, if you were to find the derivative at 1, you're going to get a tangent line. And that tangent line is negative 1. What that means is the slope of that red line is negative 1. If I said 1 earlier, I should have said negative 1. The slope of the red line is negative 1. So I go down 1 to the right one. Down 1 to the right one. Right? That slope, rise over 1, down 1 to the right one. So that's our, our derivative when x equals 1. Likewise, you can find the derivative when x equals negative 2. Plug in a negative 2 into your function. Negative 2 squared, which is 4. The 1 is negative. So that's your slope, negative 1 fourth. At negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, you could draw your tangent line that passes through negative 2. And what we're saying is that the derivative at negative 2 is negative 1 fourth. So you could go down, I'll do this with yellow, you could go down 1 and you're going to run 4. So you run 1, 2, 3, 4. So our down 1, nope, didn't want that color. Maybe like this, down 1. 1, down 1. 
Hmm. Okay, I see. Down. If I'm right here, maybe some like over here. Down one, two, three. Something like that. So that red, the red line should pass through that coordinate. Something like that. So that's our slope. The slope of this red line is negative one fourth. That's the slope of that red line. In other words, f prime of negative two. So that's the idea of derivatives. We're combining these concepts of tangent lines and we were using this limiting process, the definition of derivative, to find the slopes, to find the slopes of the, of the function. Alright, that's it for this lesson. Thank you guys for tuning in. Take care.